Welcome to this month's book review. Today we're talking about Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad Poor Dad, the number one personal finance book of all time and a bestseller since the year of 2000. I have the 20 year anniversary edition from 2017. This book was released back in 1997. And this version features updates and side notes for today's world. So what is the story behind Rich Dad Poor Dad? Robert Kiyosaki had two fathers. One was his biological dad, his poor dad. He was a highly educated man, worked as a teacher and had a relatively high salary. His rich dad was the father of his best friend Mike. In the book he compares the two approaches when it comes to money of his real poor dad and his rich dad, the father of his best friend. The first chapter is called the rich don't work for money and that does not mean that they don't work for money, but they don't work for money. Which is explained in the way that they don't work to get the money so they have earned income, but instead they put the money that they have to work and let the money make more money with the help of assets, which he comes to in the second chapter. This one is called Why Teach Financial Literacy. In this chapter he goes over the difference between an asset and a liability and that oftentimes people mistake their own home, their house for an asset, when in reality it's actually a liability because it does not put money in your pocket, but instead takes it out of your pocket. An asset is something that has value, that produces income or appreciates. Also it has a market where it can be easily bought and sold. Liability again take money out of your pocket. He earned a lot of controversy for the statement that your own personal residence is a liability and not a home because it's not an asset unless it appreciates enough to offset the ownership. A rental property on the other hand is an asset because it produces enough passive income to not just cover the operating costs but also finance the real estate loan. Kiyosaki makes clear if you want to grow rich buy assets, focus and concentrate on buying assets on stocking up the asset column and keep your expenses and liabilities as low as possible. The goal is to to build an asset column that is so strong that it covers your monthly expenses and liabilities and once you go above and beyond that you're basically good to go and you will just grow richer from there. The two main statements to take from this chapter is basically to start investing in assets as soon as possible and to keep your expenses low so you can invest as much money as possible in your asset column. He says that many people confuse their profession with their business. When he asks people what's your business and they say I work at a bank and he asks do you own the bank? They say no I work there. That's because it's not their business but their profession and you should build your own business where you make yourself rich and not the people you're working for. Because if you spend your entire life working for someone else you're just gonna make them rich and not yourself which makes totally sense I guess. That's why I'm starting to work for myself and making the videos myself and not for a video production company which will just make them rich and not me. And I don't want to do that. Chapter 4 is called The History of Taxes and the Power of Corporations, which sounds like a kind of dry topic, which it is, but it's packaged in a nice to read and very interesting way. It's about how the rich understand company structures, like for example corporations, and how they minimize the tax burden they have by paying as little taxes as they can by using every legal loophole, of course. Which you should do. You shouldn't be illegal because then you could just rob a bank. Like here in Germany, if you commit a tax crime, you're almost getting punished harder than someone who murdered something. Almost. He also talks about the advantages you have with a corporate structure such as an S-Corp, a C-Corp or an LLC. If you're a business owner with such a corporate structure, you first earn the money, then you can spend it and then you pay taxes. If you're just employed somewhere, you earn your money, then you pay the taxes, and then you have to spend your money after the taxes and buy everything with the after-tax money. But if you're a business owner, you can just spend your money, spend as much as possible, and then you just have to pay taxes on what's left. Also, corporations offer more legal protection from a lawsuit. Chapter five, the rich invent money. Inventing money means finding opportunities or deals that other people don't have the skill for. Kiyosaki explains that there are two types of investors. First, people who buy investment packages from a stockbroker or a fund manager. They invest in shares of an ETF because it's a safe and not high risky way. Professional investors look at the market, analyze it and then collect stuff to make their own deal, their own investment and then they hire professionals to take care of the daily stuff. Chapter 6 is called work to learn, don't work for money and this chapter was very interesting because the idea of working to gain experience, to learn new skills and to have more experience in certain fields and not work for the money you get is a very interesting approach to working in my opinion. Kiyosaki explains that he took different jobs over several years, sometimes even taking a new job where he earned less than in the job he was at right now just to learn some new skills like for example flying. His poor dad told him he has to specify in a certain niche and get very professional at it 
to get even more specific and earn more in that certain field. But his rich dad told him he has to know a little bit of everything, not just one topic, but as much as possible, so he doesn't just rely on one profession. Kiyosaki joined the Marines right after college, so he learned to lead and manage people. After that, he joined a sales company to get experience in selling stuff to people and overcoming the fear of rejection, which is why a lot of people can't sell their stuff. Then he discusses the synergy of management skills needed for a successful business, which is to manage the cash flow, manage the systems and of course manage the people which he learned at the Marines. Chapter 7 is called Overcoming Obstacles. He talks about the five biggest obstacles people face on their way to becoming financially independent. These are fear, cynicism, laziness, bad habits and arrogance. People have the fear of losing money, of course nobody wants to lose money, but here I'm thinking about two phrases from his two fathers that he talked about I think in the first chapter, which is his poor dad said don't take risks and his rich dad said learn to manage risks which I think it's pretty cool that he kind of compared the different approaches and different statements of his two dads I think it's maybe of course a little bit edited to fit the story that it's like the exact statement from both fathers but it's pretty cool that he took the different approaches and compared them to each other. Cynicism is about doubts everyone has that affect the self-confidence. Of course, you think about what people will think of you, your friends, your family, if you lose a lot of money, but you have to overcome that because otherwise opportunities will just pass by. Laziness. Of course, a lot of people are lazy. It's hard to get up. It's hard to start with something, but once you start with it, it goes very easy. He compares it with going to the gym. If you're just at home from a long work day, you have the excuse that you worked a lot and you deserve to just lay on the couch and watch TV. You don't want to get up, but once you're there, you can just exercise and you feel really good about it mostly. Bad habits. It's about not paying yourself first. A lot of people first pay their bills, pay everything else off and at the end of the month they have very little left for investing in your asset column. That's why you should pay yourself first, which does not mean you shouldn't pay your other expenses, but if you're paying yourself first and you have less money left, you're more enforced to find other ways to make more money to pay all of your expenses because if everything is paid off and you don't have money, you're like... I'm gonna just make more money next month and then the same thing happens again. So by paying yourself first, you're enforced to make more money in that month to pay all of your other expenses because they will come at you if you don't. And I don't know if I entirely agree with this because of course if you pay yourself first and don't pay your rent and you don't find another way to make more money at the end of the month and you can't pay your rent, you're gonna get kicked out. So I guess you should have paid it first. But of course he also says you should of course pay your bills on time, but you should pay yourself first. Arrogance. Investors know what makes them money. It's what they not know that makes them lose money. Kiyosaki said every time he got arrogant, he lost money, which is why you shouldn't be arrogant. Chapter 8 getting started. He talks about that most people don't see the opportunities that are handed to them and you have to train yourself to see these opportunities. An average person can spend a week looking for a good real estate deal and they just don't see them. Even if it's right in front of them, they can't see it. But a trained investor finds it right away because he's trained in seeing these opportunities and you have to train yourself to see these opportunities as well. It's a constant learning process and you're never finished with learning. Even Kiyosaki tells that he is still learning because everyone is still learning learning never stops. Chapter 9 is still one more. Here are some to do's and I'm gonna read the headline of every to do thing on the list to you to just inspire you to get started and do something and then we're already finished with this video. But first the to do's. Stop doing what you're doing. Look for new ideas. Find someone who has done what you want to do. Take classes, read and attend seminars, make lots of offers, this is of course for real estate, jog, walk or drive a certain area once a month for 10 minutes, also for finding good real estate deals, shop for bargains in all markets, look in the right places, look for people who want to buy first, then look for someone who wants to sell, think big, learn from history and action has always beaten in action. These are the to-dos given to you at the end of the book, but of course that was not even the tip of the iceberg of everything that's in this book. I can highly recommend this book, it was very interesting reading it. If you want to get into personal finance and investing, of course I would recommend this book. It's not for no reason the number one personal finance book of all time. Of course you should read it because it's the best in its class. It's written in a very easy way because, of course, at first it's in the perspective of nine-year-old Robert Kiyosaki who was told this by his rich dad when he was nine, so it's 
kind of like written to a child so everyone from every economic standpoint can read it and understand what's going on so yeah i recommend this book read it it's linked down in the description it's an affiliate link so if you buy it over this link i get a small commission which i will pour right into my asset column trust me that's it from this video i really hope you enjoyed it if you want to watch more i normally do mostly film related content around here but i'm trying to include some of these finance and also productivity videos on this channel last month i read gary v's crush it you can find a video right here i'm trying to read one book for every month of 2021 next month i'm reading and of course also making a video on getting things done the art of stress-free productivity from david allen so if you want to know everything about this book of course subscribe to this channel so you stay up to date also hit the bell icon so you don't miss out on the video and i will hopefully see you in the next video or in any other video on my channel goodbye